When the pandemic hit, New York City was told to stay home to stay safe. But some homes hurt. That's why when New York City stopped, we didn't. So, Safe Horizon is here. For you, with you, through it all. Their shelters are still open. Their staff are working tirelessly on the front lines of the pandemic to keep people safer. Because when home is where the harm is, safety is essential. Hello everyone. On behalf of the board and staff at Safe Horizon, thank you for taking the time to learn more about this organization, which is so near and dear to my heart. I'm Sunny Hostin and I'm honored to be your host for our first ever Safe Horizon Champion Awards broadcast. We're doing something new this year, but our mission is still the same, to help hundreds of thousands of people each year who suffer from crime or abuse. As a journalist, a lawyer, and an advocate for social justice, storytelling has always been a part of my calling. It's humbling to be a part of an event that highlights the stories of survivors, stories of their resilience and how they worked with Safe Horizon to find safety. Tonight, you'll also hear from an amazing community of advocates, including Joe Notori, Tamron Hall, Alan Cumming, and Ashley Judd. But first, I'm pleased to introduce the new Chief Executive Officer of Safe Horizon, Liz Roberts, who brings with her more than 30 years of experience in supporting survivors and building a just world. Good evening and welcome to Safe Horizon's 25th Annual Champion Awards. My name is Liz Roberts and it is my pleasure to be here with you today to celebrate our powerful and resilient community of survivors. Safe Horizon is the nation's largest victim service agency. And every day we help thousands of survivors to find safety in times of crisis and danger. I joined this movement as a domestic violence hotline worker when I was just 17 years old. And the calls I took then were about just one thing, safety. Over the past year, we have weathered a global pandemic, a national racial reckoning, and an unprecedented period of political turmoil. Each of us was affected by these events. We all had reason to be afraid. And it was painful to see how these events took a particularly devastating toll on black and brown communities. This year, I believe each of us has gained a new and deeper understanding that safety really is essential. For our clients, living with fear is nothing new, but during the pandemic, many faced new risks and escalating violence. That's why when much of the city shut down, Safe Horizon stayed open. And we didn't just stay open, we stood up for survivors and we stood up for racial equity. During the year of COVID, we helped more than 180,000 people find safety, support, hope, and healing. I am so grateful to each and every one of my Safe Horizon colleagues for their incredible courage and determination. Tonight, we are honoring two remarkable people, Joe Notori, an advocate for family safety and healing who serves on Safe Horizon's board of directors and award-winning actress and activist, Ashley Judd. Their stories, along with survivor stories from Safe Horizon clients, showcase remarkable strength, bravery, and healing. And I am honored to share them with you tonight. Thank you, Liz, for your inspiring words. As Liz mentioned, the past 14 months redefined how we think about safety. Because of the pandemic, many of us questioned whether we were safe within our homes and communities. Some asked these questions for the very first time. Each and every one of us deserves to feel safe, but we are not all afforded that sense of security. People of color and especially black Americans can't ride the train, 
take a run in our neighborhood or a trip to the corner store with an assurance of safety. Because of racism, these everyday activities can turn violent without warning. The community Safe Horizon serves know the fear of violence and the survivors we support have long known how it feels to not be safe within their own four walls. Throughout the pandemic, lockdown orders have led to an increased risk for many types of harm. Safe Horizon services provided an immediate outlet for survivors to feel heard, seen, and supported on their path to a safer future. At Safe Horizon, we believe every person deserves to be safe and that safety is essential. All of us witnessed schools, cities, and borders shut down as the world confronted COVID. And with those closures, so many of the safety nets New Yorkers rely on disappeared. When much of the city shut down, Safe Horizon stayed open because our services were more important than ever. When the New York City courts closed, Safe Horizon essentially became the only place survivors could receive an order of protection to stay safe. When the city shuttered, Safe Horizon's shelter stayed open, giving victims of domestic violence and homeless youth a safe place. When children were hurt and unseen, Safe Horizon's child advocacy centers were open, offering care and healing for them and their families. When many doors closed, Safe Horizons hotline stayed online 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We also launched an innovative chat program for those who couldn't speak safely over the phone. Safe Horizons stayed open because safety is essential and safety is what Safe Horizon provides. I am in awe of the devotion of the staff at Safe Horizon who rose to meet this moment in a way I could never have imagined. You are about to hear the story of one Safe Horizon staff member who went to great lengths and thought fast on her feet to keep a client safe during the extraordinary circumstances of this pandemic. This year I took a lot of unusual steps to be able to assist and provide services, you know, for my clients. There was one client that called in. She told me that she was a teacher. Um, and that she, at that moment, had just finished um, having a class. She didn't explain the rest. She couldn't explain the rest to me because then I hear a loud, like, yelling, a male voice. I'm yelling, yelling, and then I'm hearing a lot of thumping sounds. And so I immediately asked her, are you safe to talk right now? And she was like, eh, yeah. And I was like, okay, if you're unsafe to speak with me, please let me know. She said, hold on, please, Ms. Johnson. I'll be right back. And Ms. Green, I want you to stay on the line too. So at that moment, I'm like, okay, so you must be Ms. Johnson and Ms. Green. And so once she de-escalated her husband, he stopped yelling and she came back on the phone. And I asked her again, are you sure that you're safe to speak with me? She said, yes, Ms. Johnson. Is Ms. Green, are you still on the line? And I'm answering for Ms. Green and Ms. Johnson. So I'm like, yes. And so she's like, yeah, you know, I just wanted to go back into the conversation that we were having about Kevin. And I was like, okay, so Kevin must be her husband. Kevin had a lot of manic episodes in class and that he had two sisters, age 17, and age 13. I hear that they try to help him out a lot, but he gets very frustrated to the point where I think that they're scared of him. I'm gonna make the assumption, I'm telling her this, I'm gonna make the assumption that the sisters are your daughters? Mm-hmm, yes. Her husband gets loud again and he starts screaming and I'm starting to hear loud thumps. All I know is that I wanted to get off the phone and call 911, but she wanted me on the phone. She wanted that support, so I stayed on. I said, um, would you like to continue talking? Would you like to end the session? We can talk another day. And at that moment, because he got very loud, she was like, please, please, can we speak tomorrow at 11 a.m.? And she hung up on me. And yes, the next day when I contacted the client, she was like, thank you for not hanging up the phone. And I had to tell her too, you know, I'm glad that you're safe. You know, I'm glad that you were able to find a way to communicate with me. I know it was confusing. I told it confused me, but I just want you to know that I understood you and I heard you. I heard everything you said. And from then on, we started discussing what was going on. And this is what I tell our clients. You are your first own responder and 
just what can I say just letting the client know you know you should be proud of yourself you should be proud of yourself it's not easy doing what you do is not easy being in this type of situation but the fact that you lift up the phone to contact us that alone that alone says a lot i'm so moved by the talent and dedication of people like jenny and am incredibly grateful that survivors have people such as her to count on in their moments of need. Someone who shares this admiration for Safe Horizons work is one of tonight's honorees, Joe Notori. Safe Horizon is one of the largest domestic violence organizations in the country. I'm here now with Joe Notori, who is the global head of corporate healthcare investing for the asset management division of Goldman Sachs. Joe is also a fellow board member at Safe Horizon. And Joe, I know that domestic violence is something that has great personal importance to you. So my first question for you today is, why is Safe Horizon's work so important? Thank you, Sunny. I'm so honored to be here with you today and to be here on behalf of Safe Horizon. Um, domestic violence is one of the most pervasive problems in our society, and organizations like Safe Horizon really are in the front lines of, of dealing with the situation. And I think almost any, everyone has been touched by this issue. I know I have been personally, as well as many of my friends. It really is everyone's issue, and, and thank you so much for sharing that. I, I think a lot of people are probably surprised to learn that you have dealt with this issue personally. What do you want people to understand? Domestic violence is incredibly complicated. And I actually think it takes a strong woman or a person um, to deal with these complicated situations. Um, so from your perspective, why do you think it is so hard to walk away from these abusive situations? Every, every time it happens, it's, it's a little bit more and a little bit more, and it becomes a new normal every single time. And it's often followed by apologies, and it, it'll never happen again. And you're in this situation with someone you love, you care about, and it gets, it gets very complicated. And it's not even the psychological element. There's other complications. There's life factors. You have children. You um, are codependent financially. There's other religious considerations, social considerations, as to why people don't leave. And it's just not simple. And I think that's why Safe Horizons is such an important organization, because it's really not a one-size-fits-all. Every situation's different, and every circumstance is different. I want to drill down on something that you said uh, earlier that really struck me. You said um, domestic violence happens everywhere, and that it's everybody's issue. Um, this isn't a one-person one issue when something happens. It really is pervasive through everyone who comes into contact with the situation. Um, and it's every race, every profession. We all know someone who's gone through this. You may not know that, but you do. And I think talking about it is really important and bringing it to light because the longer it stays in the shadows, it's, it's, it's just that much more damaging. I have one final uh, question, and I just think it's so important. What would you say to someone who is experiencing domestic violence. What do you wish someone would have said to you? I think it, um, I think pointing, being supportive, um, offering, offering not to take over, but to suggest that there are resources that you're believed, um, I think is so important. Um, so I would encourage everyone to reach out, check on a friend, make sure you're asking the right questions, and uh, really, really believe that if you're hearing something that suggests that something is not right, that you ask the second question um, and make sure you follow up. Thank you so much for sharing today. I think that you have saved lives. And to anyone out there watching, 
Safe Horizon is here for you. You can reach them 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year at 1-800-621-HOPE, H-O-P-E. Thank you, Sonny. I'm grateful to be sharing this evening with all of you and to be doing so at the request of my two partners, Joe Natori and Luke Sarsfield. I am so pleased that Joe is being honored tonight, and if you would permit me, I just want to send her a special message. Joe, you are a woman of great courage, character, and integrity, and I'm extremely proud of all that you have accomplished. I count the days working with you by smiles. You are a shining thread in the tapestry of our great firm. And speaking of Goldman Sachs, we have had a long, meaningful relationship with Safe Horizon, having first joined forces in the aftermath of 9-11, and then again in 2005 to help bring relief to the victims of Hurricane Katrina. Fifteen years later, and during what can only be described as unprecedented times, our commitment to Safe Horizon's mission, both from our firm and our people, continues. And it is nothing short of an honor for us to partner in the critically important work that you do. Safe Horizon has been there and at the ready, helping New Yorkers recover, rebuild, and move from crisis to confidence. And importantly, the pandemic has highlighted the fundamental need for safety in all its forms. And I know all of us look forward to the day when there are no more victims of violence, abuse, or hate of any kind. And until that day, Safe Horizon remains a beacon of light and hope for all of us. To all the generous donors who helped to keep the organization functioning, I would like to say thank you. And to all the honorees, I offer my sincere congratulations. My very best to everyone, and I hope that you enjoy the evening. We are so grateful for John's kind words and for the generous support of Goldman Sachs. With their support, survivors will continue to find the help they need to heal. When the pandemic hit and most of New York City shut down, Safe Horizons domestic violence shelters stayed open. They stayed open because New Yorkers depend on their services always being available. In December of 2020, right in the middle of the pandemic, a father came to Safe Horizon looking for a space that was safe for his daughter and himself. This is their story. Before I had gotten into Safe Horizon, I was having situations with my daughter's mother and it had gotten to a, a situation to where when I was going to visit my daughter, it looked like there was neglect. I would come there three days in a row and you see her see, eating the same thing, candy, 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 candy. Is she being bathed right? And are you even like giving her any attention? So that's, that's what was bothering me a lot. It takes a toll on you mentally. I had the baby with me, I had my daughter with me already. And then it just escalated to where the residence I was staying at, my daughter's mother was continuously coming and it was certain situations where she was leaving certain things in front of the door to where my family wasn't comfortable with me staying there anymore. When I got in contact with Safe Horizon, it was both wanting residence and for my safety. I met Miss Wanda maybe a few days after I arrived upon Safe Horizon and I can see that she actually does care. The staff members are over there, even the custodians. They come, they come and see my daughter, hey, how are you? Everything's all right? How are you, brother? Everything's good? Yes. Sometimes in the real world, you don't, you don't get that at all. You just, you just get judged, judged, you know? So that's what I appreciate about Safe Horizon. Advice I would give to another man that's, that would be in the situation that I'm in, I just want them to believe in themselves. They have to do it because you have kids involved. I gotta keep myself to the best that I need to be. So I gotta continue to keep going as strong as I can be because I have a daughter. 
I'm happy that I, I have my daughter right now. Like where we're at, that's where she feels like that's her home. So she can feel safe and she can move the way she likes to move without hesitation. So it makes me feel, it makes me feel all right. So that is the best part about it. As you can see, with support comes safety and healing. This is Safe Horizons' mission, and they make it a reality every day, even under the most challenging circumstances. This work is hard, which is why it's so rewarding when clients go out of their way to share their appreciation. Here with some of those stories is my good friend, Tamron Hall. Hi, I'm Tamron Hall, and I've spoken openly about how my family was devastated by domestic violence. My sister Renata's memory is very important to me, and I want to uplift her name to help the families and survivors who feel alone. I don't want one more survivor to feel alone or unheard. I want everyone to know that Safe Horizon is here if you need support. In this last year, stay-at-home orders placed victims of violence in close quarters with their abusers, amplifying that sense of being alone. But Safe Horizon remained open, and throughout the various waves of the pandemic, their hotlines continued to answer calls for help, and their doors remained open, offering hope and safety to those who needed it most. I am truly inspired by Safe Horizon's work and thankful for all they do. And in this, I'm not alone. These are just a few of the positive messages of hope and appreciation expressed to Safe Horizon by their clients, which I'm happy to share with you now. I appreciate your ears, heart, and love extended to me and my daughter. Today, I was granted the allowance for my home building. I know this could not be possible without you or any of the team members at Safe Horizon. I was truly blessed to meet you guys, and I will forever tell about the love and respect you all have given. I'm going to get the keys now. I learned that there's a difference between hearing someone and listening to someone. My experience at Safe Horizon was a great one. My caseworker made everything very comfortable and easy for me. She was awesome with helping with my housing and overall, I think the director of this facility is doing a great job. I feel very safe now and that they have my back. Anything was to happen. I have no fear. Congratulations on your strength and positive contribution to the lives of women who've been silenced, mistreated, and oppressed. I'm alive because I got here. Thank you for the welcome. Your work makes a difference. Thank you, Safe Horizon all you do, not only because you are always there for victims of crime and abuse, but because you understand that hashtag safety is essential. Thank you, Tamron, for sharing those inspiring messages. One of the most terrifying things a parent can experience is the worry of never seeing their child again. While struggling through the pandemic, Raja had to face that fear because of an abusive partner. I was uh, preparing my bachelor on business administration before I get married, before I met my ex-husband. When I met him, I start, start my studies and I moved to New York. I thought like it's gonna be a good beginning, but it was the worst experience in my life. But the only good thing I had, it's my son. At that time, I just moved from New York to Virginia, and my my son's father, he left me here in Virginia, and he moved back to New York. He left me without food, without rent, I wasn't working, and I get a letter from the court, and I saw that I have to appear in New York, and I have, it was a case filed against me. I don't know how to, to deal with the court. I don't know with the law. I don't know anything. And I didn't have money. He was accusing me that I'm kidnapping my son and it wasn't true. 
But once I get connected with Christina and was connected with the Safe Horizon, I feel more comfortable at the beginning. There's Christine Palmo at the beginning, and after that there is Christina with her. And every time there is many people with me, and they give me more confidence. I went to New York to get my son. He didn't give me back my son. I was scared and I was I was like crying. I said, he doesn't want to stop. I, I was terrified. I, I said, this is too much. This is too much. I call it Christina. I told her what happened. The next day I came back to New York. We went together, me and Christina, and we went to the judge and we explained to him, explained to him what happened. And we filed a case. And the judge told me that uh, he gonna bring our son and he bring our son and I, I took my son back. With the same horizon, with the connection, with the help, like I get a power and I, I know how to put my feet on the floor, how, how we say it. I feel more safe, more confident, more positive. It's been three years and a half. I have been uh, renting by myself. I get custody by your help, by Safe Horizon. When my son is with me, my life is shining. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you for my help. Raja is an inspiration and she is proof of the positivity that arises for survivors when they are able to form a partnership with Safe Horizon. She is also an example of why it is so important that we are gathered here together in support. With our help, Safe Horizon can assist more families like Rajas. And now, please welcome a true advocate for survivors and a longtime supporter of Safe Horizon and 2015 Champion Awards honoree, Alan Cumming. Hi everyone, I'm Alan Cumming, and I'm so pleased to be here with you once again to show and share my support for Safe Horizon. The work Safe Horizon undertakes is crucial in providing resources, access and aid, not just to survivors of violence, but to the surrounding community. But this work, their work, would not be possible without your generous support. I ask that you do what you can for an organisation that affects the lives of so many people by going to www.safehorizon.org slash champion and making a donation. A donation of any amount is welcome and can go far to aiding Safe Horizon's clients. For example, a gift of $5,000 could cover the cost of new clothing for 400 victims of child abuse. A donation of $2,500 allows for a thousand answered calls to one of Safe Horizon's 24-hour danger hotlines. A gift of $1,000 provides healthy meals to 350 young people at one of Safe Horizon's homeless drop-in centres. Donating $500 helps provide legal assistance in obtaining an order of protection for five survivors of domestic violence. No amount is too small. Every dollar you contribute is needed to support our Safe Horizon community. Again, please visit www.safehorizon.org slash champion and provide the support Safe Horizon needs to continue helping the 250,000 people who rely on their services. In addition to asking for your support tonight, I have the extraordinary pleasure of introducing an inspiring woman, Ashley Judd, and I am honoured to share with you the impact she has made. Ashley has chosen to use her platform as a world-renowned actress to shine a light on sexual abuse. As a voice for the voiceless, she speaks up for those who cannot speak for themselves and empowers other voices in the conversation. Ashley is one of the most vocal and influential figures of the Me Too movement and was named Time Magazine's Person of the Year for being one of the silence breakers and change makers who helped shift the culture and conversation around sexual abuse and harassment. I'm so pleased to be here to recognise our dear, brave friend. Please welcome 2021's Voice of Empowerment honoree, Ashley Judd. Good evening and thank you so much for that very kind and generous introduction. I am Ashley 
and I'm very honored and humbled to be this year's recipient of the Champion Award for Safe Horizon. And it's pretty much a direct miracle how a kid like me ends up a woman like this, receiving this award. The first time that I was molested that I remember, I was seven years old, and I say remember because there was another time I was sexually assaulted in a store. And there is a police record of that assault and that offender is still a registered sex offender in a county near where I live, but I have no conscious memory of that assault. I was also commercially sexually exploited the summer I was 15 years old when I lived in Tokyo, Japan. And I'll spare you the details of that, but it was gruesome and it was horrible. So that I could grow up to have a voice and to be considered a champion is a real turnaround to say the least. And I would have had a very different childhood if an agency like Safe Horizon had been there for me. And with their programs and initiatives, their compassion, their smarts, their informed policy, their evidence-based trauma programs, they make lives better for those of us who are survivors of harm, sexual assault, sexual trauma, rape, trafficking. And I wanna thank you all so much for what you do because it really makes a difference. And when kids like me are growing up, we look around and we say, where is everybody? Where is everybody? And today, the people that you reach, especially through programs like Safety First, can answer that question and say, they're right here. They're at Safe Horizon. Through your compassion, through your empathy, through your dedication. And this work is grueling and it's difficult. And so part of my message is to those of you who are the caregivers and the frontline workers who are public facing with those of us who are survivors of all kinds of sexual trauma, take care of yourselves. You're too valuable to burn out. You know, self-care isn't selfish. It is self-esteem. And we need you. We survivors need you. And sometimes, you know, it is asked of me why I chose to speak up, but I spoke up when I was seven years old. The first thing I did when that man molested me was go to two adults and say, hey, this is what happened, and they shut me down. And this is another form of patriarchal violence and wounding. They said, oh, he's a nice old man, that's not what he meant. And the next thing I did was I went to my safe person, my Uncle Mark, and I tried to tell him, but by then I was already losing my voice. And thank you, good God Almighty, I have my voice today. Because what I know is that perpetrators put their toxic shame on, vi on victims and they silence us. But, but when we have a chance through programs like those offered by Safe Horizon, to have that catharsis and to have that purgative process of externalizing that toxic shame and putting it back where it belongs, which is on the perpetrator, on the aggressor, and on the patriarchy, then we are silenced no more. And when we have voice, I know this for myself, I connect with my trauma healing because trauma not transformed is trauma I will transfer. And so it's my responsibility to heal my trauma. And then I will have agency, I will have autonomy, and I will have the dignity not only to stand for myself, but to stand for others. And this is some of why it's such an honor for me to receive this kind award from you tonight. God bless you all. Thank you so much for what you do. And again, thank you for answering that question for kids who grew up like I did, you know, where is everybody? And for being there now for survivors. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for your work on behalf of survivors across the globe. Thank you for using your voice and using it so beautifully. Our theme tonight is safety is essential. Each of us has the right to be safe especially in our homes. Sadly, we know that for too many, that right is not a reality. That was true for far too long for this next survivor. Thankfully, with support from Safe Horizon, she is now safe and on her way to hope and healing. I met my husband. I put a lot of trust into him. And um, he tore me down mentally, physically, and emotionally. That lost me completely. It took a lot, a lot of the mental abuse out. I started self-medicating with drugs to escape. I just recently stopped struggling with my addiction. It's a horrible feeling when you don't have control over your life, when you need someone else 
to validate you, to make you feel safe, to make you feel wanted when you don't feel wanted. I have a son by him, and um, he started witnessing the verbal abuse, the physical abuse. If I would have stayed, it was teaching him how to become his father. I want my son to respect women. I'm African American, and it's hard enough just being black. I don't want him to ever feel that he has to mistreat any woman. Any woman. I want him to love. When I got here, um, my case manager gave me a lot of strength. She sees something in me that I didn't see. When I got here, I was like in the dark. And it's like she helped pull me back to the light. My case manager has taught me to live again, not to just exist. She had more faith in me than I had in myself. She gave me hope. I remember I, was, I call her my hope, my dream, my possibility. I took my life back. 20 years, this is not my first shelter, but this will be my last. I have my self-esteem back, and I know that I can do it. I can do anything that I put my mind to. I just gotta believe in myself. Sometimes these stories are hard to hear. Every day, Safe Horizon deals with the trauma left behind by violence and abuse. But as we just saw, there is also hope. When New Yorkers needed help, Safe Horizon was there, day or night at the front lines of safety. Safe Horizon even built a new domestic violence shelter in the thick of the pandemic. Opening soon, Orchid House, will truly be a safe horizon for 45 families affected by domestic violence. With bright airy rooms and spacious apartments, Orchid House will be a welcoming space to begin their path to healing. As you've heard tonight, we know that when survivors have support and space, amazing things can happen. And Safe Horizon provided that support to many survivors this year. From the moment the city shut down, Safe Horizon has offered more than 180,000 survivors critical services so they could stay safe. Before we depart, I want to take one last moment to thank Goldman Sachs for their generous sponsorship of this year's Champion Awards and to thank our incredible honorees, Joe Notori and Ashley Judd, for their work on behalf of survivors everywhere. And of course, to my friend Tamron Hall, who has so often used her platform to advocate for others, as well as the wonderful Alan Cumming, who continues to speak on behalf of survivors. Safe Horizons work is both life-saving and groundbreaking, and that work is only possible because of its community of donors. You can be part of that by simply going to safehorizon.org slash champion and making a donation that will aid Safe Horizon in helping to transform lives and lift up survivors' voices. Over the past year, safety has been at the forefront of everyone's minds. As we've seen throughout our program, safety is essential. Thankfully, because of Safe Horizon, many survivors are able to access safety. And I hope that like me, you are inspired by tonight's stories. Together, we can make sure survivors find safety, support, hope, and healing. Thank you for joining us tonight. Be well and stay safe.